Um, what do you want to talk about? Spring practice, fall practice, uh, preseason practice? How's that? Preseason practice. Um, let's see. Today was um, number five for us. Uh, as you know, we went three, uh, had a recovery day. Um, this will be our back-to-back -back day, uh, our fourth and fifth day. Today was um, situationally uh, second, second down, um, second and short, second and long. Um, and tomorrow we'll go into uh, full pads and we'll be our first down and distance where we include third down. So uh, we'll move the chains, uh, get into um, all situations uh, relative to first, second, and third down, and a little bit of red zone. So it's been a natural progression uh, through the first six. We went three on, uh, had a day off. We'll go three again and have a day of recovery. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned to you, I think, you know, we want to be very careful as we acclimatize our football team. Uh, we were out for about an hour and five minutes today um, and got a lot of competitive work in during that an hour and five. So I think our team is, is getting to that point where tomorrow we'll be out for about an hour and 15, we'll get to an hour and 30, and then next week, pretty close to where we can get virtually an entire practice outdoors at the level, um, competitive level that I'm looking for. Um, I could keep them outside for two hours right now, but it would be diminished returns. So um, I like the steps that we're taking. I like the way we're going about it. Um, injury free, um, knock on wood. Um, you know, the guys are doing a great job recovering. You know, we're using our, um, our, our recovery center um, and, and it's really been effective for us in, in, in helping get the guys to, to come back the next day stronger. So it's been, I'm, I'm pleased, you know, from that standpoint. Now it's about executing um, installation, uh, the technical and tactical pieces um, to a level where our guys know what to do. Um, uh, and, and how to do it when they're supposed to do it. <laughs> that's, that's really, you know, the, the whole deal right now. So with that, let's fire away. Here you go, Coach. Uh, Brian, can you talk about special teams? Uh, third year in a row, new special teams coach. Can you talk about the specialists? How is that coming to, together right now? Well, it's not really a new special teams coach. You know, we're co-coaching it. Um, coach Diaco is part of it. Um, Coach Herb is part of it. Those, those two were with us. Um, Coach Nagel is part of it. So with, with the new uh, NCA rule relative to where everybody is able to give technical and tactical advice, um, it allows for us to have some continuity, quite frankly. So, um, you know, I made that decision that, that we would give uh, Slade um, you know, uh, a big piece of that, I, I'm able to pull back a lot of that now that we have other coaches that can give technical and tactical advice. So you'll see a lot of Coach Diaco, you'll see a lot of Coach Herb, uh, you'll see Coach Nagel, you'll see uh, Coach Hankton, um, Coach Wilson, Coach Davis. Uh, virtually um, seven coaches will have their hand in what we're doing in, in special teams. So. I like the continuity in that sense because we're, we're doing um, you know much of the same in terms of you know the uh, the technical work. Um, you know there are areas that we have to be better at. You know we were really good in in punt coverage. Uh, we were really good with um, field goal, extra point, field goal um, protecting. We have to be much better. Uh, in the kickoff coverage game and the kickoff return game. You know, that's got to be uh, really big for us. And, and we've got to be able to, to see improvement there. We're, I think we're 75th in the country. You know, that's an area that we've got to see significant improvement. Coach, it looks like you all are using a lot of different receivers with the first group. Uh, who makes the determination about that rotation? And what are you trying to accomplish by getting so many guys reps with the one seemingly? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we always have a conversation. It, it, it would be Cortez, myself, and, and, and Joe uh, Sloan. We'll, we'll make the final decision. But, you know, Kyron Lacey's going to be there. You know, Chris is going to be there. Um, CJ is going to be there. Th those three guys, you can count on them, you know, being integral parts. Um, but, you know, I, look, there, there's, like you said, there's so many other players that will, will play roles in some fashion. Um, and, and, and I think what we feel like is that if you've got, you know, three guys that, that you feel really confident in, let's get all those guys you know, work with that first group and, and get some continuity with the quarterback. So, you know, if Nuss is out there and, you know, Aaron's out there or, um, you know, we have a, a rotation that has, you know, two or three tight ends, um, he feels comfortable with all those receivers. So it's not just the second group that's getting that work. So we felt like it was important to get all those guys work with the first group because, I want Nuss to see all those guys because he's probably going to throw to all of them at some at some time, but but I, I think we, we I gave you three guys that are that have been really consistent in camp right now. Hey, coach, can you tell us what traits to you pop out about JVR Suggs, and what about those traits are going to keep it uh, hard for you guys to keep them off the field? Experience. He's played a lot of football. Um, He's got first step quickness inside, uh, gets off the ball, and, and he's got pass rush ability. You know, there's not a lot of defensive tackles that, that have natural pass rush ability. Um, so he's demonstrated natural pass rush ability. He's got first step quickness, and he's got a lot of experience. We, we were looking for a guy that was experienced um, that could give us, um, you know, some minutes inside. and you know, he's proven to, to be that kind of guy for us. Hey, Coach. Jason Willis with the Reveille. I uh, just wanted to ask, watching the defense in the spring, uh, it seemed like from a coaching perspective, the instruction was very basic, stuff like alignment. Obviously, you're still implementing this new system. How have you kind of seen that ramp up and progress, and how do you expect it to continue to ramp up? Well, I mean, you got to play a game in three weeks. In the spring, you had, you know, um, you know, really, it, it is so much more about, you know, technical work. You know, you have to be able to blend your technical with the tactical as you prepare yourself for, you know, an opening game and, and it counts. So, um, you know, you're installing your defense with, with an eye towards both the technical and the tactical. And the tactical being, um, you know, you've got to keep the points down and, and, and win games. So... I think that that's what you're probably seeing more so than from the spring to, to preseason camp is that um, you've got to be able to execute as well. This is not just about playing great technique. This is about executing the techniques that we give you so we can play winning football. Uh, C Coach, with Xavion Thomas, he hasn't been as active the last couple of days. Is there any sort of update on him? Yeah, he's had a, a slight hamstring, um, you know, and – we feel like, you know, he's a guy that's going to be an important player for us. We don't want anything lingering, so we've just been very careful with him. And, and Matt Marco, Mac Marco, I don't think I saw him today, and it wasn't very Yeah, nice you know, he's, he's made a decision that uh, he's not going to play, um, and uh, he's, uh, you know, I don't know what his plans are, whether he's going to transfer, um, but he informed us last night that uh, he was not going to play at LSU anymore. And uh, with that tight end room in general, does that open up potentially more op uh, opportunities for a guy like Trinidad Green? And, and if, if that's the case, then what kind of progress have you seen from him s specifically then? You know, we're, we're pleased with him. Um, you know, both of them have made really good progress. I, I think uh, KP Pimpton is, has been really good as well. The last, I'd say, last two practices in particular, his consistency in, in run blocking, his consistency in catching the football uh, assignments have been really good. Um, and then I thought, you know, by and large, Tredez has assimilated as a true freshman as well as we could have expected. Uh, again, considering somebody that hasn't played a lot of football either, um, really pleased. 
they're both going to play for us, and, and they're both going to have a role, and one where, you know, I think it'll depend on how they continue to grow, but, you know, I can imagine this one being such that, you know, you could potentially see, you know, you know all those guys, including Mason, on the field together. Um, Brian, down here. what do you like it seems, about the way that Blake Baker schemes up pressure? It seems like it comes from a lot of different places and that he uses different blitz packages, even though it's been early in camp. Yeah. What do you think so far about it? Yeah, I, well, <laughs> we've been down this road before, right? I mean, it's great on paper if you have all of these great schemes and all these pressures, but if your players can't execute them, not so great. Um, our guys... Um, have been able to uh, execute um, and play really fast uh, in the system that Blake is employing. So it's the teachability of it, and it allows our players to continue to play fast without having to uh, play with this um, um, paralysis by analysis, I guess is the best way I would put it. So. Uh, pressures that can come from a lot of different looks, but play fast is really the essence of what has made Blake's pressures so difficult because guys can play really, really fast and not make critical errors. Coach over here. You talked earlier last week about the consistency with the young DBs. Uh, in the last team period, you had P.J. Woodland and Ashton Stamps making plays on two really good thrown balls by Nuss. Have you seen the consistency, even though it's early in camp, because they have started to, to make some really good plays on the outside? Um, we, we've put together some, some good periods of time. There's no doubt that um, progress is being made, but not to the point where it's championship level play. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a – a journey for those guys in particular that that will look for them uh, to continue to put like practices together instead of like a good period and then a not so good period. And the great part about it is, is both of them clearly know what they need to do and they're working really hard at it. So and, and they're not the only two. There's a number of guys that are in that category of trying to do what is expected of them um, and execute when they need to execute, when, when, when it's called upon. Some of them are, you know, below the line right now, but I can see this uptick of performance like you can um, from a lot of those guys and I would just say that after five practices there's really good signs but we got a ways to go. We're going to speak with Joe Sloan tomorrow. What have you seen from him since December as far as his taking command of that room, that role, and, and what do you want to see from him on game days? Well, I mean, look, the, the, the first thing about being an offensive coordinator is uh, making sure that your staff is, is weighing in on the things that are most important with their groups. And uh, I think he's done a great job of, of bringing consensus into the room and, and getting great feedback from, you know, Brad Davis and Cortez and Frank Wilson um, and, and uh, you know, Nagel, I mean, all these guys are, you know, Nagel's an offensive coordinator, Frank's head coach, you know, um, it, Brad's been a, a, you know, an interim head coach, but, a, a, you know, established offensive line coach. I mean, so you have a lot of veteran, you know, coaches that, that he's brought into the fold. You know, it's not walk in the room and it's my way. And, um, but he's been a leader too, like, you know, this is this is the way Coach has asked me to uh, put together uh, our offensive structure, and um, here's how we're going to go about it. But but bring everybody with him. I think he's done a really good job with that. Organizationally, um, it's been really good in terms of our practices and how they've been put together, um, to my mind's eye. And then 
what I'm looking for on game day is, is certainly um, let us be who we are, right? I mean, play to our strengths. I think that's really important. This is not about, um, you know, statistically, you know, what do we look like? This is about how do you win games and complementing our defense. And, you know, if our defense needs to get off the field, how do we get them off the field, you know? And I think a great offensive coordinator has – has an understanding that it's not about how many points I score, it's about how do we win the game. And I think Joe is, is um, in that uh, mindset of, of understanding that the offensive coordinator is still about how do we help this team win games, and I'm, I'm excited about watching that. Hey, hey Coach, um, I think during the offseason you said that the defensive linemen can see that, hey, we're going out and trying to get guys in the portal or getting guys in the portal. They're here in the talk. They're motivated by that stuff. Jacoby and Guillory said as much yesterday. <coughs> he told his teammates, hey, they're looking to replace us. Do you see those guys that were on the team last year motivated, getting better, to prove that they are better than some people think? <coughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's that natural sense that, um, you know, everybody's motivated by um, – this sense of, you know, we're not good enough, right? And um, there's a pride factor that I know our defensive line carries that, um, you know, Jacobian probably articulated yesterday. But I can tell you this, you know, w w we knew that, uh, you know, a guy like Jacobian, a guy like, um, you know, Shone and, and Chemo and, and those guys that were with us in the spring, um, we're, we're going to have to be guys that gave us uh, an opportunity to, to have success as well. So even though we did, you know, grab a couple of guys in the portal, and, and that's it, we grabbed two guys out of the portal, um, I think they knew that, you know, they were still going to have to perform at a high level, and it was still going to come back to them and how well they played. And, and that's really been the case. Um, you know, Jacoby has had a great camp. Um, Shone has really improved. Um, chemo is, is really helping us quite a bit. Um, you know, we're, we're getting young players involved, and, and uh, Don McKinley, you know, he's playing for us and, and, and giving us quality reps. And then you look at Geo and, and, and Suggs, you know, they were brought in to, to give us uh, reps as well. So I, I think it's been more of a, a understanding that We've got to be able to hold up our end, and we need a little bit of help, too. And, and I think that that's why this group is doing so well right now. Yeah, Brian, uh, Will Campbell's been so consistent since, since day one here. Uh, what has he improved the most since he's been here, and what does he have left to improve I mean, uh, in, in his game? Um, I think the one uh, piece that stands out is um, leadership. And when I say leadership, right, leadership is such a, a general term, right? I mean, I think Will was not a man for many words, and he still isn't, right? You guys have interviewed him before. Um, but when he speaks, uh, he really resonates with our team. And I think he's done that more and more and made his, his opinions known to our football team. And, and I think that that growth has been really good for him. And it's been really good for us because when you have a guy like that that is, that is so respected by his teammates, when he speaks, people really listen. I think as a player, um, I think just the fact that uh, his craft is such that we're asking him to do some things this year that he hasn't done before. We're pulling him, moving him. You know, we're much more of an inside-outside zone team we're pulling him a lot more. We're moving him. And, and I think that that's going to just heighten um, who he is as a football player and give him a chance to really, um, I think, excel at, at the national level and in the eyes of, of NFL um, scouts. So it's going to be exciting to watch. Coach, a couple guys on the defensive line we haven't talked about, Braden Swinston and Jalen Lee. When, when can you expect to see them back on the field for practice? Well, they've been working out. Uh, they're finishing up summer classes. They have to finish their Spanish. Um, yeah, I know. Go figure. Um, 
Swinson uh, and, and Lee both are in their Spanish four class, and it's the summer C session, which ends on Monday. And um, they're on track to graduate. Um, so that class ends on Monday. So we have been working them out in the afternoons. They come back and they work out technically so that they can stay on track with their acclimatization. Um, so they've gotten four, four, four of their practices in um, because once they're done, we don't want them to have to then go through six days of acclimatization. So we've brought them back after their class and they have worked out um, with uh, one of our assistant coaches and a strength coach and a trainer um, in the afternoon. Good? All right, thank you.